All right, we're live. So welcome back to DAP University. So today we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of exciting stuff has happened in the crypto space since our live stream that we did yesterday. Again, we do these live streams Monday through Friday on this channel about 9.30 a.m. Central Time. Just turn the notifications down below. Subscribe. You'll find out about those whenever you go live. Uh, we're going to answer some of your questions, look at the crypto markets, and a lot more. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So last but not least, I think I'm saying this video is not going to be financial advice, and there's lots of scammers down in the comment section below. Like, just ignore them. I'll never give you my phone number or ask you to invest with me. So uh, we got people jumping in the chat here. We've got uh, Culture Hives, David, uh, Code Chap, Automatic Beats, Bruno, Adam, uh, G Main, uh, uh, Heath, Tyler, Kaz, Independence. Welcome, welcome. All right, so let's let's go ahead and jump into this. So let's, the first thing I want to talk about today, which is what the title of this video is about, is the massive crypto pump uh, that is upon us, okay? And look at some possibilities, whether this is the pump that causes us to break out of this bearish trend that we've been on, this kind of like limbo consolidation period that you could really say has been going on for months, uh, what some arguments are in favor of that, and what some things are you should watch out for that um you know that that might be the the opposite so let's go ahead let's go ahead and take a look at that here um so the first thing i definitely want to look at is what's going on with uh the bitcoin price okay so bitcoin is now trading at forty seven thousand dollars <laughs> north of that and you can see this massive candle that happened in the matter of just a few hours uh you know this morning so uh, this morning for me here in america uh so i mean bitcoin price moved by four thousand bucks like pretty short <laughs> on the grand scheme of things uh you can see what's happened over the past seven days here um you know we were trading back around forty one thousand dollars and like i said before if you if you look out you can look at this bearish trend that we've been on and if you look at it in a much longer period of maybe like uh six months or so we've kind of been in this you know kind of side side bearish kind of sideways motion for a long time um so the question is um you know are we seeing any setup for a position to where bitcoin can go to the hallowed one hundred thousand dollars per coin we see a lot of people talking about uh, Q4 being a big quarter for Bitcoin, maybe that's the time when we can see uh, the Bitcoin price make new all-time highs. There's lots of rumors about lots of things that could happen, and we're seeing lots of uh, different um, coins, especially majors, mirror exactly what's happening with Bitcoin. I mean, Ether did the same thing. You know, Ether was kind of stuck, uh, you know, in the high 2000s, right? We kind of hit this resistance in here. Uh, around twenty seven, twenty eight hundred dollars, and now Ether is also, you know, kind of caught up with this uh, pump that's happening with Bitcoin and lots of other coins doing the same thing, Solana, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let's look at let's let's examine the possibility that this is the uh, big pump that causes us to break out of this this trend that we've been stuck in for a while, because if if you um, and following these live streams and follow my channel. Uh, you know, my view is that I've still been cautiously bullish even through all this chop, even through the bearishness, even through the uncertainty because of all the adoption that's happening in the crypto space, okay? Um, my whole thesis is as you build technology that gives people real competitive benefits uh, to the end user and that gives incentives for people to use that technology and insofar as that technology actually has uh, cryptocurrency that is integrated with it in an inextricable way, uh, that causes demand for the cryptocurrencies itself and assuming that the cryptocurrencies have standard economics and that causes price appreciation for the cryptocurrency assets themselves when you're talking about exponential adoption of this technology that can that can translate to exponential um you know increase in the price of these cryptocurrencies it's always why i've been cautiously bullish especially during these these kind of uncertain times i've been using them as buying opportunities etc etc so uh let's let's look at some possibilities for why that would so, so then the question is, what could be the turning point? So we're looking at the possibility, is is this a potential turning point? So I want to pull up a, a tweet here from, uh, you know, Mr. Raul Paul. I've talked about him a lot on this channel. Uh, he's made a ton of amazing calls, uh, you know, ever since he's <laughs> kind of, kind of, you know, been in the crypto space uh, for quite some time now. Of course, Raul is the uh, founder CEO of Real Vision Finance, has a pretty impressive uh, background. But the thing I'm most impressed about is, is the accuracy of, of many of his calls. So let's look at his uh, this tweet that he just put out. So the Bitcoin long-term chart looks pretty luscious. So who knows if this wedge breaks on first attempt, but a consolidation pattern of this magnitude usually leads to a very, very powerful upside move to Bitcoin. 
So I guess what he's saying is it's hard to know whether the the, the thing that we're seeing right now is the major trend reversal. Um, but you can see this sort of wedge playing out. And let's say this wedge doesn't get broken here. Let's say we have a continued bearishness or consolidation for maybe some time after this. It's, his whole point, I think, is he's still forming a wedge and that these wedges tend to <laughs> have a massive breakout at some point. The massive pump that I'm talking about um, that will likely send the Bitcoin price up to these targets that people are you know, waiting for, $100,000 plus per Bitcoin. So um, we don't know if that's right now, uh, if that pump is right now, but it could could be soon. Okay, so let's look at some arguments in favor of, of it being this one, okay, or why it could be soon. So also, before before I say that, though, uh, one thing that's really interesting about Rawls' tweet here is, uh, and talking about the accuracy of his calls, he, he I, I remember him putting out a tweet just like this, uh, or very similar to this, last summer uh, when Bitcoin uh, was about to break above ten thousand dollars because if you were watching the crypto space last year uh ten thousand dollars was a pretty critical number for bitcoin i mean we kind of got close to ten thousand dollars at the beginning of the year then you know the uh crisis happened and then after that you know bitcoin was trying to trying to regain its footing and then ten thousand dollars is critical resistance level and then when we kind of got confirmation that we were you know it was time time to party for for the bull run i mean bitcoin just you know made this big candle uh above and then it you know struggled to get above ten thousand dollars anyway the whole point i'm trying to make is he he correctly called uh the wedge during that time especially for ether that it had made so these all these charts we're talking about um so that's why i really try to pay attention to what he says because he's had a lot a lot of really great calls especially in a space where a lot of people in crypto when they're talking about uh macro trends and prices have literally no idea what they're talking about for the full record i don't, I don't pretend to be a price oracle on this channel to know exactly what's going to happen with the cryptocurrency spice prices but i do like to uh make pretty concerted you know pretty pretty strong bets on people who do know what they're talking about so let's look at some potential um Let's look at some potential things in favor of this being a breakout or a breakout happening really soon that could have this big pump. So one, uh, one we're seeing some positive sentiment from the Fed. So, you know, one of the big things that I think has been scaring people from actually like leaning into crypto right now has been the regulatory uncertainty and also the uncertainty about what's going to happen Um with sort of the monetary policy, especially in the United States, okay? Um, let me just pull up this. I, I lost the link. So, one, uh, one, in terms of regulatory uncertainty, we did see this sentiment come out yesterday that, uh, you know, the Fed's Jerome Powell says that uh, the Fed has no intention to ban cryptocurrencies. <laughs> okay, so I didn't think this was ever going to happen in the first place. Um, but this is something that has caused a lot of people, you know, anxiety about going hard on in, on crypto. Okay, so uh, I think this kind of clarity uh, is important for the market, especially in the short term. <laughs> I see some takes on this where people say, uh you know, our brains aren't working right because every time the Fed says something we disagree with, we are calling their bluff. But every time that they say, you know, something that we do agree with, we're like, you know, all, all up in arms and excited. Uh, so <laughs> I guess you could you could also consider that point of view as well, that, you know, every time the Fed says that inflation is transitory, then we you know <laughs> want to say that they're lying. Uh, and then when they say that they're not going to ban crypto, that they're that they're 100 percent telling the truth. So definitely. uh keep that mental framework in, intact. So, uh, but anyways, that, that is bullish for the, the short-term price at, in the very least, okay? Um, so another, another pretty bullish thing for all assets, including crypto, which could be a, you know, st stack uh, in the deck for in favor of a, of, a, of a big pump that breaks out soon, if that's now or soon, is basically, um, the Fed not seeing a need for rate increase until 2024. Okay, so this is something that people are watching out for. Um, you know, ha having a pretty significant impact on what's going to happen to asset prices. Basically, you know, when, when interest rates are low, people can borrow money for cheap. You know, numbers go up because assets get inflated uh, because people buy assets with leverage, and when you make that leverage very cheap, 
Um, it just, that's what the incentives are. So that's another piece of clarity. So, um, you know, another big factor is the ETF in the United States. I keep hearing rumors about a crypto ETF, Bitcoin ETF being approved in some of the United States. There's a lot of them, you know, supposedly uh, up for approval in October and they could be approved. Again, a lot of these things are rumors. Uh, if I'll believe it when I see it. If it happens, I think it'll be awesome. I think we can have a crypto, especially Bitcoin uh, ETF in the United States relatively soon on the grand scheme of things. I don't know if it's going to happen in October. If it does, that could definitely be bullish for crypto as well. So, um, yeah, those are some of the big catalysts that I think could could be major for the space right now. Um, again, a lot of this is about people's perception about whether it's safe to go all in on crypto. And if we see some of these favorable things, then I, I think we could be at a, a spot where we see a, a big pump that causes us to break out of this kind of limbo we've been in for a while. So let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. Somebody says crypto is a protocol. Trying to ban protocols is impossible. Powell stating the obvious. Yeah, it's true, but you can, I mean, you can't shut a protocol down, especially if it's borderless and decentralized, but you can always restrict your citizens from uh, using those protocols, right? And then anytime they're using it, they're, you know, committing Ill illegal activity. Um, so that would significantly reduce the number of people who actually do it. So the uh, you know the China ban news is getting boring. We've seen it over and over again. Yeah, I'm with you 100. percent Okay, so let's look at something else that came up yesterday. Because again, so much has happened in the crypto space since our live stream we did yesterday. Um, this is actually pretty major. So of course we're seeing lots of different uh, you know pieces, lots of adoption happen in crypto. And that's one reason I'm so, you know, bullish long term and still in the short term, cautiously bullish, um, because we talked about you know, Visa earlier this week. Basically, Visa launching uh, a payments hub for stable coins and central bank digital currencies. And they're build they're they're actually building a layer two uh, implementation on top of Ethereum. OK, this is huge for the Ethereum adoption. Um, it's one of, it's it's a vote of confidence in the direction of Ethereum being a major settlement layer. And one of the reasons I'm so bullish on Ethereum long term because of the decentralization and security and that actually being a good uh, fit for building robust decentralized infrastructure that massive centralized companies actually want to build upon because in the, the day, you don't want to build on a blockchain that's has that sacrifices decentralization in favor of you know scalability. If you if you have <laughs> if you're a massive entity like this and you want to you know cooperate with other entities, so um, another piece of adoption in this same light is what's happening with uh, TikTok. Okay, so uh, we have three different artists. And actually more. So they're just naming notable ones. Lil Nas, uh, Grimes, and I'm not actually sure how you say this person's name. Forgive me for being out of touch. <laughs> uh, are releasing TikTok NFTs. Okay. So uh, TikTok uh, is building with Immutable X. All right. So because no peace can be found in the age of man, TikTok has decided to partner with select creators, celebrities, online entities like Lil Nas, uh, Bella Porsche, I hope I'm saying that right, and Grimes to release a collection of non-fungible tokens. These top, uh, these TikTok talk, TikTok top moments, <laughs> say that five times fast, um, as the company is calling them, are inspired by six culturally significant TikTok videos in the form of one on uh, one of one NFTs. TikTok plans to auction them alongside a selection of limited edition NFTs that will sell through October. So uh, let me find. Yeah, so here's the here's the implementation. So proceeds will largely go directly to the creators and NFT artists involved, TikTok writes, but the company de declined to break down specific percentages when they asked. Uh, TikTok says a majority of the earnings will go to creators and NFTs. The rest will go to Immutable X, which handles NFT trading uh, and the Museum of the Moving Image, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, 
yeah, this, this is a big deal. Big, big deal for NFTs. Of course, we saw Twitter NFT verification go live. Not go live, but um, confirmed early this week and what that's going to look like. Uh, we, like I said, we're seeing Visa come into the space. We're seeing uh, TikTok come into the space. You know, it just begs a question. If we see all these social media giants integrating NFTs, when are we going to see something like Instagram, you know, doing this? When are we going to see something like Facebook doing this? Now, I don't know if Facebook's going to. They might have their eyes set more on digital currencies to get their, you know, users into that world. Uh, they have been for a long time. Um, but I could definitely see see Instagram uh, sort of countering or answering what TikTok's doing in some way. Some way. So it's massive. I mean, this this is this is the foundation for mass adoption, <laughs> you know. We're talking about major credit card companies coming in and using blockchains to actually settle payments. And then you're talking about some of the biggest social networks in the entire world uh, implementing blockchain features in some way. That's the beginning of mass adoption. It's crazy. All right, see so if you got any questions here in the chat. So Audio has something uh, common with that TikTok NFT. I'm not sure the question there. Somebody says Facebook has interest in Metaverse. They definitely have interest in Metaverse. I should have brought that up. That's true. Um, you know, we talk, so somebody, sometimes people are wondering, what is the Metaverse? Well... It's a uh, it's sort of a next wave of the internet. You can kind of think about part of Web 3.0. I actually did a video the past couple of days about Web 3.0, what you need to know about that. Metaverse is a little bit different. So Web 3.0 is an internet powered by blockchains, um, but the metaverse is like a disembodied internet, all right? An internet where you can actually create, you know, digital worlds that you can experience through either augmented reality or virtual reality, okay, um, where, you know, you, you can create a representation of yourself in there and that these digital worlds actually, um, no, nobody owns it. Like, it's it's an open world and then, you know, individuals and, and corp, you know, companies, decentralized autonomous organizations, whatever, can own things inside the metaverse and you can actually experience a new world there. So there's lots of things you can do with the metaverse, and you could think about how it changes how you interact with the internet, uh, interact with others online. So, for example, um, you know, you, you already kind of get a glimpse of this. Uh, like, th think about the transition from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0. Uh, the transition from the internet now to more disembodied internet would be like if you got on a Zoom call with somebody, you know, you're talking to that person there's still a benefit to talking to that person, but you're not really, you know, face to face. And then the benefit there is that you can, um, access, yeah, you know, get access to people that are not geographically close to you necessarily. Um, or even if they are somewhat geographically close to you, you still save time by being able to talk to them on, on FaceTime or zoom. So you take the next level with metaverse is, you know, instead of getting on a zoom call, you might actually meet at a physical location inside the metaverse, but you don't have to actually, take time to travel to that, you know, physical location. Um, but then you actually get to experience that inside of it uh, with that person. And then, you know, the added benefit on that is you can sort of create your own persona inside the metaverse where, you know, it may not be your physical appearance, but you can create your own sort of appearance. I think we're seeing that expressed with NFTs. So where like, you know, you could, you could be your NFT in the metaverse, right? It'd be crazy. And and the way the way this works, so of course we've seen VR in the past. We've seen all this stuff sort of like, um, we we've seen all this the beginning of all this stuff play out before. It's just that now with blockchain technology, we can decentralize the ownership of these types of things. And instead of like a siloed centralized company creating a VR you know world that you can play on their game server, like you can create a metaverse where ownership over the items. And the real estate in the metaverse is actually decentralized and open and permissionless.
Someone says, I'm new to learning uh, JavaScript, and if I got a Dappy diversity, will we be able to teach someone who knows completely nothing to be a blockchain developer? Yes. The more coding experience you have, the easier it will be. Uh, but I definitely thought people with no coding experience become real-world blockchain developers. Some of them pretty fast. Yeah, a lot of that depends on how motivated you are and how much time you have available to study. Um, but yeah, totally. Totally possible to do it from scratch. Somebody says, can you tell me if I understand this right? If ETH is burned and it becomes deflationary, the price can go up while the market cap is going down? Question mark. Um, so almost. So if it's being burned, um, the price and the market cap will go up together. Um, but the total supply will go down. That's that's what it is. I think you just got the, the think you just got a little misunderstanding what the market cap is. The market cap is a function of the price of the cryptocurrency and the number of units of the cryptocurrency. Uh, technically, circulating supply, but in the case of ETH, let's just, let's just call it total supply. So basically, um, the market cap is going to be the price of ETH, which right now is about thirty three hundred dollars, times the supply. That's how you get market cap. So if if deflation happens uh, through the burn, then the total supply decreases, which causes um, uh, ba basically, yeah, that's that's how it happens. You can see here. So if you were to do the do the if you were to do the calculation, basically, you could look at circulating supply, multiply or, and divide. Or multiply it by the price, and that would give you this number right here. Conversely, take this, divide it by this, you get this. Let's see here. Do you think there's a w possibility of a decentralized crypto bank beyond DeFi like Aave and Curve? Um, that's kind of like what they already are. So somebody said, do you think crypto regulations negatively affect blockchain developers as well? Um, I mean, I... I it's going to limit what you can do as a blockchain developer, but, um, I mean, there already are limits on what you can do as a blockchain developer from a legal perspective. Like, if you're in the United States, um, you know, you're, you're going to struggle to just go out there. Like, like if you're in the United States and you're a blockchain developer, like, you're probably in some pretty murky water if you're going out there, like, launching new tokens on Uniswap every single week, <laughs> okay? So that's already a limitation on what you can do as a blockchain developer. Um, you know, so we're talking about increasing regulations. I mean, they're going to limit what you can do as a blockchain developer, but it's not going to remove opportunity for you uh, completely, or or maybe even that significantly as a blockchain developer. Um, that's something to keep in, keep in mind. So I think it's a really relevant question for people watching this channel, like, hey, I want to learn these skills, but I live in the U.S. or maybe some other Western country who might see similar regulatory uncertainty um, or maybe a different country. That's what I would say. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have strong incentives for other uh, countries to make most blockchain activity fair game because they're going to attract all the talent. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, building something's different than operating it. So it could be a, a situation where people are hiring American talent, but then they have like, you know, something offshore that deploys it. So automation smart contract protocols like Gelato 
<clears throat> excuse me, and Chainlink keepers are coming. What are your thoughts? Um, so I don't have any strong thoughts yet. Uh, these are definitely topics I want to look more into, but um, if if we have time to do a little more research there, I'd be happy to shed some light. So any uh, good blockchain real estate companies, case studies you're aware of can talk about. Um, so we have seen different um, blockchain real estate, you know, projects come out. So we've seen, uh, you know, Realty, for example, um, you know, tokenizing real estate. We've seen other people doing like, property sales, all, all of the type of stuff. Um, smaller, they've been, they've been smaller scale types of things. Honestly, one of the biggest uh, roadblocks to real estate uh, really taking off with blockchain is just adoption. I'm not sorry, not adoption. It's a regulation, regula regulatory fears, um, and also just regulatory friction. Because, um, you know, it, 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 the tech is here. It'd be incredibly easy to tokenize a piece of real estate and then let people purchase shares that you know you know tokens that represent ownership in that real estate It'd be incredibly easy we're talking about uh, ownership of a house um you know digitizing the deed to that property with blockchain and smart contracts would be incredibly easy um and honestly it'd probably even be fit for the scale of ethereum right now on layer one because in like transferring ownership of a home that's pretty infrequent, okay? And uh, you typically have to pay a lot of money for that to happen in the real world right now, so the transaction fee wouldn't be an issue on Layer 1 Ethereum. Uh, and the total volume of real estate transactions in the U.S., let's just say the U.S., uh, as a case study per day, would not be enough to really affect the 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 scaling pains of ethereum 1.0 right now let's actually just look up the number us real estate transactions per day let's look at it so it doesn't tell me what the daily statistics are so it says 54 million existing homes are sold in 2020 or 5.4 5, 5.64 million were sold in the entire year Um, so if 5.4 million transactions happened in the entire year of 2020 inside the United States, um, then, you know, yesterday Ethereum processed 1 million transactions in a day. So, you know, you could do all, you, you could digitize all the U.S. real estate transactions in a matter in less than a week on Ethereum's current, you know, scalability so the whole point is the tech's here. It's, the tech is relatively easy on the grand scheme of things. It's the regulations and also the incentives. I mean, a a, a, a government's got to want to do it. And so I think you're going to see, I, th I think the place where we've seen real estate, you know, moved in the direction of blockchain in places where it's just kind of easier to do. There's less regulatory red tape and usually smaller, you know, jurisdictions. Less to lose. From a user's perspective, there's a ton of benefits because, I mean, how they track, like, deeds to properties and stuff is, like, they literally keep big old pieces of paper, like, in courthouses and stuff. And, you know, I mean, somebody get digitized. You can look at, like, property assessor websites to, like, look at, you know, history of, of real estate transactions and, and stuff. But, um, you know, it's it's pretty old school. <laughs> Someone says, current laws say the property deeds need to be kept in the county the property is located in. Yeah, that makes sense. Like I said, there's going to be lots of, you know, 
regulatory red tape around this. With this title insurance, companies would not be happy. No, 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 they would not be happy. There's lots of people who would not be happy about what blockchain can do. I mean, you see this from an auditing perspective. Blockchain, you know, it makes auditing uh, doesn't doesn't. Here's the thing: it's not going to replace anybody's job, but it's going to drastically reduce the need for the number of people to do that job. Because uh, at the end of the day, you're always going to want to have some human like double check on things, but like. I think I don't really love about real estate transactions is like, it's like we got some people who who are kind of into real estate in the chat here. Um, and it, it is the rent seeking nature. Uh, I don't mean landlords like buying property and renting it out to people. Uh, what I mean is basically like when you go to a closing, if you buy a house, uh, of course there's your purchase price, there's whatever down payment you're gonna put down, or you're gonna pay in full, whatever. But then at the very end, you know you have these line items, like probably a half dozen line items that are like all these added on costs. And usually it's one person per line item that's like, well, you need me in order to make this transaction. Or it's like, I, you know, it, which is best about people who invest in real estate and you're not using like realtors and you're not like, you know, you don't necessarily need a bunch of financing and all that type of stuff. Like, let's say you just wanted to buy a house with crypto. Let's say, or you want to buy a property with crypto. You know, let's say you want to go, I don't know, build a house or something. You just want to buy a piece of land. Uh, they, you still have to go through all these hoops. So, like, if you had this with blockchain, you could just find somebody who's got it. And if they owned the deed, uh, you could just be like, all right, let's, I'll just, you just send a smart contract. Like, I'll just pay you for this in Ether and you transfer it to me. Uh, but instead, you have all these people <laughs> that want that little slice of the pie to make sure that there's no, uh, there's no lien on the property. The title's all clear, you know. That 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 uh, does the paperwork to transfer the ownership, all that stuff. It's it's pretty crazy. So am I holding onto my hash mask long term? Yeah, I still have my hash mask. Uh, I think the prices went down <laughs> after I bought it, but I don't really care. I mean, it's one of those things, like I said, I, I bought it with money that I could afford to lose, so I'll just hold it. I'm actually curious. I want to check on what the hash mask floor is. Let's actually take a look here. I, th I think it's probably about the price that I bought it at. <laughs> oh well. All right, everybody, that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master's shortcut entirely, I can become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching, Dad.